mocking and the laughter of those he dies to save. His Behold the Lamb, see him crowned with glory. Ted and Bob and, and Joanne, uh, and, uh, and not sing. Uh, one of these days, however, I think we're all going to be able to stand and sing with gusto uh, to the top of our lungs, uh, but for today, for this Easter, uh, we ask that you, uh, that you uh, uh, sit and listen. Now, if you'd like to stand on the first hymn uh, when they sing, you may do that, of course, uh, at the end. They're going to sing Hallelujah Chorus, the Hallelujah Chorus, and we will all stand for, for that. We're also going to gather at the Lord's table uh, at the end of the message. Uh, it is uh, uh, just an honor and privilege to be able to do uh, that, celebrate the Lord's Supper with you in person. Those of you who are joining us at home, if you would like to gather bread and wine, bread and juice right now, uh, so that you'll have it ready when we do uh, celebrate the Lord's Supper, we invite you to do that right now. I'm joined by, not only by this, uh, this, uh, the brass quartet and our, our chancel singers, uh, Bob and Joanne Winslow, but also Pastor Bernie Leaving, who will be offering, uh, reading the scripture for us, and Pastor Justin Morrisrow, who will be leading us in, in the liturgy, uh, and then also uh, the, uh, the pastoral prayer. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Let's worship together. And you may stand on this hymn if you'd like. Yeah. 
peace of Christ be with you. If you would, remain standing, please, uh, and join me as we recite the Apostles' Creed and affirm our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Father, what a joy to be in your presence celebrating the resurrection of your Son this morning. Our hearts are filled to overflowing. You are the creator of all things and the sustainer of life. Not a single star in the vast expanse of the cosmos flickers. Not a single subatomic particle vibrates outside of the boundaries of your sovereignty. Your name is above all names. All glory and honor and praise belong to you. You hold all things together and draw all things into yourself. You are before and beyond all things. You are love embodied, and this Easter morning we enter your presence to offer you our time, our attention, and our worship. By your hands, all humankind was stitched together in your image, and we bear your signature in our DNA, your fingerprints in our composition, your purpose and intentionality in our consciousness. You have called us into relationship with yourself and with with one another. And so we have gathered to meet you in this space. We come, but we do not approach empty-handed. Some of us bring gifts of joy in our hearts, and others are carrying burdens. We lay them all at your feet this morning. It was we who introduced sin into the masterpiece of your creation. We have chosen ourselves over you. And even within the scope of our best and most ardent efforts, we have given to sin. And we have been captured by its lies. But today, today, O God, we revel in the reality of what you have accomplished for us. On behalf of your children, you stood up to the darkness. Looked death in the face and whispered, no. No more will the terror of mortality plague your beloved. No longer will sin separate you from all of your children. No more will humanity have to be held hostage by sin and the destruction of its wake. We rejoice in the transforming of humiliation into glory. Jesus, you gave up your life that we might be made right in God's sight that we might have access to holiness, to your heavenly kingdom, and the eternal life. Through Christ we have been adopted, and God has lavished upon us blessings beyond our comprehension. Our thanksgiving is boundless. 
Holy Father, though we have been redeemed, we still live in a fallen world and our day-to-day needs can feel all-consuming. We pray for your peace, for your healing, for your presence in every second. We lift up our loved ones, our leaders, and our enemies. Help us to announce the good news that Christ has risen. The kingdom of heaven is as is at hand and hope rests in your victory. We are here this morning to celebrate Christ's triumph over death. We are here to celebrate the fact that because of Christ, we are a people of resurrection. Open our ears that we may hear, our hearts that we may receive your holy word as you proclaim it in the reading of scripture and through your Holy Spirit, through Pastor Bruce. Anoint him, O God. We pray that we would not simply receive your word, but that we would be transformed by it. In the precious name of our Messiah and salvation, Jesus Christ. Amen. Normally, uh, if it were not COVID times, we would be passing the plate. But because uh, we cannot do that, we encourage you... Uh, to give God's tithes and our offerings uh, through many ways that are available to us. You can text Palmacia to 77977, give through the app, the website, or drop off a check in the narthex on your way out. Let us continue in worship.
Here now the Easter story is recorded by the Gospel of St. John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you've carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned to him and said in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Christine, thank you so much. And thank you all again for being here. You have no idea how much of a thrill and joy it is to have you here <clears throat> in our Easter worship service. Um, some of you, uh, Ann Smith uh, came in, said she hasn't been here for over a year, and some of you have not been in church for over a year. And most definitely did not attend an Easter service last year, um, and it's been quite a year. But you all have been faithful, and uh, I want to say from the outset, thank you so much for your faithfulness. Even though you weren't here, <clears throat> you, uh, you supported us with your prayers, uh, your uh, uh, contacting us, and, and also your, your financial uh, faithfulness. Uh, when we canceled service uh, over a year ago, I told the staff, I made a prediction, uh, that I don't think we can sustain this for but just two or, three, two or three weeks as a church, but you all have sustained us, and uh, I appreciate that so much. Thank you for your faithfulness. <clears throat> With all the running happening on the first Easter morning, I'm really surprised that Nike or Adidas or somebody hasn't made a commercial about Mary and John and James, especially Mary, who, who made, made the, the sprint three times back and forth. We barely get, barely get out of the first verse 
of the resurrection story, and Mary is running away from the tomb, the same tomb she saw Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus lay Jesus in the Friday before, uh, the Friday just before sundown, on Friday just before sundown. The gospel said she ran, not walked, um, uh, but ran, probably as fast as her feet could move her. And in the fourth verse of our Easter message, John and Peter are running toward the tomb after Mary burst into their house uh, where they were sleeping and screams, wake up, get up. Uh, someone has taken the Lord and, uh, and we don't know where they have put him. And Mary runs back to the tomb with Peter and John. And then after Mary encounters the risen Lord outside the tomb uh, and Jesus tells her to go back to the disciples and tell them that he is risen, uh, now, the Gospels don't specifically say that she ran back after Jesus uh, told her to go tell the disciples, but I'll wager all of my earthly possessions that she ran back to the house, uh, back to the house where the disciples were staying, and with euphoric shouts and animation announced, I have seen the Lord, an announcement so loud that all creation woke up that day. An announcement so loud that it's been ringing in the ears and echoing in the hearts of the faithful for more than 2,000 years. A lot of running happened on that first resurrection morning. On that first Easter Sunday, a lot of running. So much running, I'm thinking maybe our Easter celebrations could incorporate some, some relays and some races uh, you'd probably love to see your pastors uh, 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 race uh, after church. Uh, I'm not going to. Uh, Justin, I think Pastor Bernie would be able to, to outrun us all. He's in pretty good shape. Uh, he takes care of himself. Well, maybe we, can, maybe we can challenge the Presbyterians to a 100-yard dash or something next year and see, see how that will go. Our Easter Sunday attire could appropriately be uh, running shoes and jogging shorts instead of Easter bonnets and brightly colored dresses and brightly colored ties. And it's really not that far-fetched uh, if you read the text carefully. <clears throat> According to our text, competition and being first seem to be the order of the day on that first Easter morning, on that first Easter Sunday. Did you notice John's not-so-subtle uh, way of letting us know that he outran Peter to the tomb? Um, uh, now, we could just say that's incidental information on John's part, but when you think back, <clears throat> it appears to me anyway that this may have been a continuation of a rivalry that's been going on between, between John and Peter, a, con a competition, positioning themselves to be the first disciple, uh, the leader of the group, second, of course, uh, in command uh, after Jesus. And maybe it had been going on for years. You know, Peter and James, uh, uh, James and John and Peter were in the fishing business together prior to leaving their nets and following Jesus. Um, but I think it began in earnest after Peter's declaration of faith when he said, Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus, you are the Messiah. This is what I think. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus replies to that declaration of faith by responding to Peter. Peter, blessed are Simon, blessed are you, son of Jonah. <clears throat> For flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. I'm going to rename you from Simon to Rock. To, uh, to, uh, to Peter, and on your affirmation of faith, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not be able to be able to prevail against it. Well, of course, the other disciples were there and heard all of that, and they took notice of that. And it wasn't long after Peter's declaration of faith uh, that we see a maneuvering among the among the disciples for the top spot. A real competitive spirit began to began to happen. And they began to argue amongst themselves uh, as to who would be the greatest. <clears throat> Who's going to be the leader of the pack? Uh, John, this John, took his brother James uh, after that and went to Jesus and said, Do us a favor. Uh, when, you, when, when you become the, uh, the king of all of the nations, we want to sit on your right and on your left hand. Make us, first, make us second and third in command. <clears throat> 
Now, <clears throat> the rest of the group didn't appreciate that, and it caused quite an uproar because James and John did that. But it looked like Peter was rising to the top in his leadership role, and John and James wanted to head that off, wanted to nip that in the bud. And John, and John, uh, writing or dictating this gospel years later, uh, after, after the actual events, refers to himself as the other disciple. You know, uh, the one whom Jesus loved. Uh, Peter may have become the, the head of the church after Jesus ascended into heaven, but, but everyone knows that I was Jesus' favorite. Now, and on the final resurrection sighting at the end of John's gospel, when, uh, when Jesus appeared to, them, uh, to the seven disciples who were out fishing, and he, he, had, uh, he was uh, making them breakfast, uh, frying up some fish when they, got, when they, got, when they came to the beach, uh, and Jesus and Peter took a walk. And Jesus was pointing out to, to Peter how he was going to die. And Peter looked at John and pointed to John and said, well, what about him? What about him? How's he going to die? And Jesus pretty much said, John, that's none of your business. You, you concern yourself with following me. Being startled out of their sleep <clears throat> when Mary burst into the place they were staying, John and Peter set out for the tomb together. At first, they were running together, but the running together probably reminded them of this rivalry that was taking place, and their running together turns into a race to be the first one to the tomb. We don't hear about this race in the other Gospels, only in John's Gospel. Wonder why? Well, that's because John was, was writing this Gospel or dictating this, this Gospel is the, is the reason why we hear about him coming in first. And John said, we were running together. We were running together at first, but I outran Peter, and I was the first one to the tomb. <clears throat> I didn't go all the way into the tomb. I just looked in. But when Simon Peter finally arrived, true to his impetuous nature, he exercised no caution. He just goes right into the tomb. And John writes, Peter saw this. This is what Peter saw. The linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. <clears throat> when John followed Peter into the tomb... He saw the exact same thing that Peter saw, but with the eyes of faith, John saw more. And the greatest aha moment in the history of the universe happened that first Easter morning. It suddenly dawned on John what had happened. His Lord's body was missing, not because of grave robbers, but somebody had taken, taken his body away, as reported by Mary. The Lord's body was missing because he had risen from the dead. Notice also, John didn't say, we saw and we believe, Peter and I. No, he didn't say that. John said, I saw and I believed. Now, for the most part, the first Christians didn't believe in the resurrection of, of Christ because they couldn't find his dead body. They first, the first Christians believed because Jesus appeared to them. Mary didn't believe when she saw the stone rolled away. Uh, she made an assumption that someone had stolen Jesus' body without going in to see, uh, by the way, uh, and made an assumption and reported it as factual to John and Peter. Somebody's taken Jesus' body away. We don't know where they've laid it. And, and Mary still didn't suspect that he had risen when she looked into the tomb where John and Peter, after John and Peter had already gone home and apparently saw two angels sitting there where Jesus was lying. It wasn't until the resurrected Jesus called her by name. And she recognized him and, and grabbed hold of him as to never lose him again. That's, that's when Mary believed. Jesus said, Mary, you're going to, have to, you're going to have to let me go. I've, I have a few things to do. I'm pretty sure you can't squeeze the life out of a resurrected body, but Mary sure, sure came close, I think. And John pretty much says, Peter, when he, after he had seen everything that I saw, went back home, sort of dazed and confused and pondering what, uh, what all this might mean. He, but he didn't believe. 
<clears throat> and even after Jesus had told them numerous times uh, that he would rise from the dead, they weren't expecting him to. Remember the cleansing of the temple when Jesus uh, ran out the money changers and the livestock merchants um, out of the temple, and the Pharisees demanded, to, to, demanded a sign uh, authorizing his actions. He says, tear this, tear this temple down, uh, and, and I will destroy this temple, and I'll build it back up in three days. It'll, and the Pharisees were indignant. They said, this temple's been under, under construction for 46 years, and you're going to build it back up in three days? Almost parenthetically, the author inserted, but he was speaking of his body, not the temple itself. And afterwards, after he was raised, and as we, was, as we look back on it, we realize that he was referring not to his body, uh, to his body but uh, being, ri- being uh, rising in three days, not the temple. But the religious leaders remembered that. Remembered what Jesus had said about being raised from the dead. Remember after Jesus' crucifixion in Matthew's gospel, uh, they, the Pharisees went to Pilate and said, remember, remember the imposter said that he will rise from the dead after three days? Maybe you should post some guards at the tomb so his disciples don't try to take his body away and then, and then tell everybody that he is risen. The second deception will be for, worse than the first. The Pharisees. The Pharisees remembered what he said about the resurrection, about his resurrection, but it just didn't register with the disciples. The first Christians came to believe because they were eyewitnesses to the resurrected Christ. They found themselves in the same room with, walking on the same road with. They spoke to, ate with, and touched the resurrected and living Christ. More than 500 of them, uh, Paul records. But there's one exception. One exception, <clears throat> when John, John the Beloved, the one who, who outran Peter to the tomb, crouched down in a darkened tomb, only, only lighted by the, by the rising sun, crouched down beside Peter, staring at bloody grave clothes, and the linens were lying there in such a way that it either looked like the body just disappeared and the, and the, and the linens just fell where they were, or that somebody, someone had taken them off and rolled them up and neatly laid them down. He said, that's when, that's when I believed. Before Jesus appeared to me, before Jesus appeared to me and the rest of the disciples, John connected the dots uh, uh, before the others did, and it all began to make sense. Up until this point, John says, we weren't making the connection with the prophetic writings of the Old Testament, but now they came flooding into John. Maybe he was thinking of Hosea 6, 2, where it says, on the third day he will raise us up that we may live before him. Or Psalm 16, for you do not give, us, uh, give me up to Sheol uh, or let, uh, let your faithful ones see the pit. Jesus had told them <clears throat> several times. <clears throat> Excuse me. Several times that, that he would rise after three days and that it was necessary for him to do so. But the disciples, just, they just didn't have ears to hear or eyes to see. But look closely what John says. He says, I saw and I believed. Because now I understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Have you ever read scripture and, and said, wait a minute, I don't remember that being there last time I read it. Who put, and that's the way it was with me, who put that must in there? That must wasn't there the last time I read it. Where did that must come from? I didn't get that the last time. So I started looking at the must and, and, and did a deep dive like they teach us in seminary to get out the, the dictionaries and the lexicons. And, and that word must is the Greek word de, delta, epsilon, eota, and it means must. It means necessary. It comes from the root word deo, which is uh, delta, epsilon, uh, uh, omega, which means to bind or to fetter. And the use of day in the Old Testament expresses that Jesus' life and ministry was not the result of happenstance or accident, but the divine must, the will of God. 
The same divine must when the 12 year old Jesus says to his mother after she had been frantically looking for him when, when, when they left him in Israel, uh, why were you searching for me? Don't you know that I must be in my father's house? And Luke wrote, was it not necessary, was it not a must that the Christ would suffer these things and enter into his glory? It wasn't an accident. It wasn't a failure. But the death, uh, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is the necessary, the must, the necessary result of the saving acts of God. John is saying, Jesus he told us numerous times that he would rise from the dead, but we just didn't understand. But now, but now I understand that his death and resurrection is a necessary fulfillment of Scripture, a divine must. He must rise from the dead. I saw the empty tomb and the grave clothes, and I believed. So John... Uh, John tells us, I outran Peter to the tomb on that first Easter morning. He was pretty proud of himself, too, I think, that he was able to outrun Peter to the tomb. But he's also telling us that he was the first at something of a far greater significance. John is telling us he was the first to believe that Jesus had indeed risen from the dead. Now, the reason this matters is because John believed before he actually saw the resurrected Jesus. John believed before Mary ran back to, and announced to, to him and Peter that she had seen the Lord well and alive. John believed before Jesus appeared to him and the rest of the disciples. Now, the reason that matters to us the reason that matters to you and to me is that you and I come to believe, come to our faith in the very same way John believed. Without the advantage of seeing and touching the resurrected Christ, without the advantage of Jesus calling our name, without the advantage of Jesus inviting us to examine the wounds in his hands and in his side, without the advantage of walking with and talking with the resurrected Christ. Before John ends his gospel, just a few verses after what Pastor Bernie read, he says this, he says, listen, there's a lot more stuff I could put in here, but there's just not room. A whole lot of things I could put in this book, in this gospel, but I just don't have room. But these things, these things are written so that you, and you, and you, and you, and, and me, so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, through believing, you may have life in His name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We call this celebration the Eucharist. Eucharist is Greek for, the Greek word for thanksgiving. And it's the meal of bread and wine where we give thanks for Christ's death and resurrection. On our behalf. We also call this the Lord's Supper because Jesus commanded his church to, to do this in, in remembrance of his death and resurrection. We call it Holy Communion because it is a means by which we are joined with Christ and one another. For these reasons, we celebrate the Eucharist on this Easter morning and embrace the mystery of Christ's presence with us 
in this act of worship. Will you join me now in our service of Holy Communion? Christ our Lord in, invites to this table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. <clears throat> As you are able, will you please stand for the prayer of great thanksgiving? <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right. Uh, 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 let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Your love shows no partiality for everyone who fears you and does what is right and is acceptable to you. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. <clears throat> holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. You anointed him with your Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed. Those in power put him to death. But you raised him on the third day. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind. You set at liberty those who are oppressed and announced that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, ate with sinners. And by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with, with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Spirit on us gathered here and on us gathered in our homes this morning and on these gifts of bread and wine here on this altar table and on the tables before our people in their homes and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. For all who believe in him receive forgiveness of sins. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, 
and the power and the glory forever. For those of you who are worshiping with us online, the bread, the body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat and be thankful. The blood of Christ, shed for you, take now, drink and be thankful. Now for those of you who are here in person so that we can, we can uh, uh, participate and celebrate the Lord's Supper together in a, uh, in a safe manner, let me offer these, uh, these suggestions for you. Uh, Pastor Bernie and I, on our, before we uh, touch the, 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 the bread, we will purell our hands. We will uh, take the wafer and intinct it into, uh, into the wine. And then when you come forward uh, and receive the, the wafer, if you would uh, open the palm of your hand as, as flat as you can so that we can put the wafer in your hand without, without contact with each other. We're going to ask you to come via the, uh, the first rows uh, near, the, near the chancel and then work towards the, the back of the church. Uh, come forward via the center aisle and then go return to your seat via the, uh, the outside aisle. Normally, we would invite you to stop and pray at the, uh, at the prayer rail before you return to the seat, but, but because, of, uh, because of COVID, we're going to ask that you return to your seat and uh, after you receive. Of course, take your mask off long enough to receive, uh, to, to take the, uh, the bread and wine, uh, but return to your seat and then offer silent prayers there. Um, and as you come forward, uh, I will be on one side, Pastor Bernie will be on the other, Pastor Bernie and Pastor Justin will be on the other. Uh, uh, come as you will, uh, but just remain socially, uh, uh, it's not socially, uh, 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 distant from each other, uh, if, you, if you would, uh, and, uh, and also do so as you return to your seats. Now, uh, we will all have our mask on, and we will not speak. Normally, we like to say your name and say, and say, Tony, the body and blood of Christ given for you. But we will not do that in this close proximity. So uh, I will say it now for you. And when we hold the bread up, uh, recall these words, the body of Christ broken for you. Take, eat, and be thankful. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take, drink, drink and be thankful.
Eternal God, we give thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Through our baptism, we are a resurrected people. We are resurrection people. Uh, grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Holy Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen.
I want to thank our brass quartet, our chancel singers, Bob and Joanne Winslow, all under the direction this morning of Mr. Jeffrey Bogue. Would you show your appreciation for them? It's much more meaningful when we can't sing ourselves, right? <laughs> right. So thank you so much for leading us in worship and ushering us into the presence of the Holy this morning. And thank you all. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Easter people, may the Lord keep us all true to that which he has called us to. May the Lord uh, keep us all calm during these very uncertain times. May the Lord keep us effective as we work towards building the kingdom of God. And now may the love of God our Father, the grace of Jesus Christ our Lord, and the presence of His Holy Spirit be with you right now, Easter 2021 and forever. Amen. <laughs>